Glad y'all here this morning. I want to share something with you that's on my heart because I got to talk to you about something. I'm going to talk to you about the way you dress this morning. All right? Look out there, and, I, and I'm looking, and I'm thinking, boy, a lot of you look all pretty and handsome and all these kind of, we could call it whatever we wanted to, but if y'all was going to work this morning, some of you this morning, you'd be wearing a, you'd be wearing steel-toed boots. Some of you would be wearing, a, wearing your, your safety glasses or maybe even a hard hat or something like that. You wouldn't, but you wouldn't be dressed like you're dressed this morning. Some of you, if you was uh, sighted this morning that you was going hunting, you know what we'd have on? We'd have on our camouflage on and we'd put our hats. Some of you may be wearing your orange, but I'm going to tell you what you'd do is you'd be, you'd be set up for what you was trying to do that day. Now, ladies, let's say that you were going shopping this morning. First thing y'all would do is y'all would have y'all's walking shoes that you was ready, because I'm telling you, you watch them women, they're like this. They'll, they'll even wear their workout gear to go because they've got some things that they want to do. And I'm going to tell you what they'll do. They'll go to this first shop. And next thing you know, they'll shop and shop and shop and shop, and they come back to that first shop and buy what they wanted right there. That's what y'all do, isn't it? But you are always dressed for the occasion that you're going. So I want to tell you what you're dressed for this morning. I hope you're dressed for worship this morning. I hope you've clothed yourself in the right way. I hope that it's happened. So I want to, I want to just share with you in Isaiah 61, verse 10. I want to read you this scripture before I even get started. I want you all to see this. Isaiah said this, he said, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. If you're clothed for worship this morning, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to be rejoicing in the Lord this morning. And the Bible goes on to say, and my soul shall be joyful in my God. I'm going to ask you if you got joy in your heart this morning. Because if you're worshiping, you're praising the Lord the way you're supposed to, you're going to be worshiping and praising God. You're going to have joy in your heart. There's going to be things that's going on. I know that there's a lot of people that's going through surgeries this week, and you're going through, and a lot of people are sick this week. And, and the thing about it is, is I want, to, I want to pray for all of you, but the one thing I want to ask you to do today is I want you to make sure that you're prepared for worship this morning because God wants you to be in here and be ready. He said this right here, For God had clothed me with the garment of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. That sounds good, doesn't it? And it says, in the, as, it says as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorned herself with her jewels. I thought about it this morning, and as Gene was up here talking about when we was born and all those kind of things that he was talking about, I also think about about whenever Carrie and I first got married. And, and I told her last night, and I was thinking about this, and, and we were sitting around the house, and she's going to be thinking, I wish she'd shut up already. But anyway, like that, like that shirt said, at any time you can be used in a message. Right, Robert? So, so last night we was there, and we was talking, and I said, I said, Carrie, can you think of the most beautiful thing that you've ever seen? She sat there and she thought and she got quiet and I thought she would just spit out something real, real fancy all of a sudden. She said, well, I remember when we were in those mountains and she said, and we was driving through the Teton Mountains and we was looking up and she said, oh, that was pretty good. And I said, I said, anything else? She said, she said, well, you know, she started telling, describing something else. You know, it probably wasn't the, the most beautiful thing whenever I walked up to the Grand Canyon, but it was a, it was a thing that I looked and thought, wow, God made this just like that. And, you know, and she talked about that. So I sat there and I was waiting on her to tell me anything else. And I said, do you want to know what mine was? And she said, she said, yeah, what was it? And I said, this is going to sound corny to you and it's going to sound stupid. And I'm going to just share this with you. I said, it was the time that whenever the doors opened up, whenever I was about to get married. That may sound stupid to some of you, and that may count, sound corny, and you might think, oh, that was just a pickup line, Brother Steve. No, I'm on year 29. It wasn't a pickup line. I done picked her up. I'm, hey, she's mine. 
But the thing about it is, is I always watch. And you know what she told me? I told her, I said, I said, I remember whenever I was standing up there and I was waiting and they done played all these stupid music and all the people walked in for the wedding and all that stuff. Now, maybe stupid music wasn't the right one. But anyway, all the music came in and they was up there and lined up the way they were and the kids was going through throwing all this stuff and all that. And all of a sudden, I was standing up here, and that door opened, and there was my bride. Whenever I do a wedding, and they open up that door at the back, I don't look at that bride, I look at that groom. And I look at that groom, and I see what he looks like. I see as that man... Is his lip quivering? Even if he's a tough man, is that lip quivering a little bit? Is he emotional as his bride's coming down through there? And if he ain't, I'm going to tell you, I want to go, wake up, boy, you see that right there? Look, 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 look. But you'd be shocked at how many people they realized, man, she's wearing that dress for me. One of these days, we're going to be dressed in robes of white. And we're going to be praising our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forever and ever and ever. And it's going to be a continual thing. It's going to be a thing that we're going to say, man, I thought I would get tired of worshiping God, but I'm not tired of getting on my knees. I'm not tired of lifting up my hands. I'm not tired of saying, God, here I am to worship. Did you get tired of singing this morning? Did you get tired of worshiping this morning already and you just got started? See, I want y'all to know something. That was one of the most beautiful things that I ever seen in my life because that was what God was giving me. Y'all, I'm going to tell you something. If we're dressed this morning for worship, you better bet you better be dressed for battle also. Because I'm going to tell you, whenever worship comes up, the next thing that's going to happen is it's going to be battle. I had one of my teachers that started their new class last week, and they, and they said, oh, bro, Steve, we thought about it before we got to church this morning. We thought, oh, man, we should have not ever volunteered for this because all week we've been attacked by the devil. I'm going to tell you something. If you get your worship on, you better get your clothes on for battle because I'm telling you, he will come after you with all he has got but let me tell you something about this enemy that we have this enemy he will never attack something that's not a value have you ever thought about that so brother Steve what are you saying I'm saying if you're being attacked by the devil you are valued by God and you're the point that it's time in your life that you realize your value, you realize your worth, you realize, like Miss Jennifer just got through singing, that Jesus chose to come to that cross to die for all of us. And we're valued to him. He looks at every single one of us. See, whenever he was on that cross, I wasn't the only one on his mind. Every single one of us was. Let me read you this scripture right here because the Bible says in Ephesians 6, 11, we must put on that armor of God that we'll be able to stand against the wiles or the schemes of this old devil. See, I want today, I want y'all to realize that today we know all about the devil's schemes. The reason we know about the devil's schemes and about the devil's plans and all of his tricks and everything that he does is because we've got this word of God. We know what the devil's all up about. We know what's on his mind. His mind is, as I tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to attack this family, and this family's going to fold up like an accordion. They're not going to be able to handle their self because I'm going to attack them. See, we know what the devil's attack is, but let me tell you all something. I'm in Genesis 3. Adam and Eve, they didn't know about this word of God. They didn't know about the attacks of the devil. They were not prepared. And I'm going to tell you something. We have no excuse about us being prepared right now whenever the devil starts throwing his darts at all of us. The Bible says in, in Genesis 3, I'm not reading something you hadn't read, but I want you to listen because God gave me something different. I know I'm wired different and he gave me something different. So I want to, I want to read this to you because I want you to get this. 
In Genesis 3, 1, it says, Now that serpent was more subtle or cunning or craftiness. It, first off, you know, I want you to know he was pretty smart. The devil knows that he's smart and he will try to do anything in your life that he can. So the Bible says resist the devil and he'll flee from you. So let me go and read this. He said he was more subtle than any beast of the field that the Lord God had made. And he said unto this woman, Yea, hath God said you shall not eat of this tree of the garden? And the woman said unto that serpent, said, We may be able to eat of the fruits of the trees in the garden. And of the fruits of the trees that's in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat. Neither shall you touch it, or you shall die. Let me tell you something. God gave plain directions for them. He said, I don't want you to eat of that tree. I don't even want you to touch of that tree. But if you do, if you choose to, you're going to die. So let me tell you what was going on at this time. These people, they, hey, Adam and Eve, they were walking around in, in the cool of the day. But let me go on about this because I want y'all to see what happens in this. said, you shall surely die. And the Bible says, and the serpent said unto this woman, can I tell y'all why, why this serpent spoke to this woman? This woman was a value. This woman, knew, ladies, I want to share something to y'all. Every single time we hear an old saying, we say, behind every good man is a great woman. And there's truth about that. And I'm going to tell you something, women. You better make sure that you're women of God. You better make sure that you push that man in the right direction because I'm going to tell you, guys, I'm not picking on nobody but, but every one of us men. We men will do some dumb stuff if we're not careful. Amen? All right, ladies, I want y'all to realize that and what we've got to do. You don't have to sit there and go, uh-huh, you sure do. You don't have to poke him. He already knows it. But what we have to have is we've got to have a good, godly influence of a woman in our life. I prayed for that woman. And whenever the doors was open, I seen that woman. I knew what I was getting, but I didn't know to the extent. And see, I want to share something. We, this woman was valuable. And so here come, here come the servant after. And listen to this. He said this right here. He said, for God doth know that in the day that you eat thereof, your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as God, knowing good and evil. And the woman saw this tree and, and, and all this good fruit and all this food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree was to be desired for one that was wise. And it took the fruit thereof, and she did eat, and she also gave it to her husband. Let me tell you something about it, and he ate. Let me tell you what you men do. Every single one of you men, whenever, you're, whenever your uh, wife makes something to eat at your house, what do you do? You take of it. You, you eat that up, and you say, oh, that was good, honey. You're going to, uh, while you're cleaning them dishes, I'm going to go in here and watch TV for a little while. Right? And all of a sudden, that's what she did. But there's a scripture and there's a message in this. You read it here? Because if you look right there in that verse that I just said, the woman saw this. So what did she do? She saw the lust of the flesh. And also that woman, whenever she seen it, it was pleasant to the eyes. She saw there, there's the lust of the eyes. So we got the lust of the flesh, we've got the lust of the eyes, and all of a sudden she said, and there it was desired that she would have it. Here comes the pride of life too. Every single one of us goes through this right here, and every one of us have lived this life just like Adam and Eve did. But the difference between us and them is we've got this to give us directions. We've got this that tells us how we're supposed to live. We've got this to tell us that we don't have to live as Adam and Eve did. We can go and we can break off and say, I'm not going to do this. But listen to what it says. Verse 7 says, And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sold these fig leaves together. Man, they were shamed, wasn't they? I'm going to ask you a question. Whenever you sin, are you embarrassed? Whenever you sin, are you shamed? Whenever you go and say something that comes out of your mouth, are you thinking, oh, I wish I hadn't have done that? Whenever you drink what you're not supposed to be drinking or eat or do the things that you're not supposed to be doing, do you ever get to the point that you say, oh, I knew I wasn't supposed to do that, but, but I did it anyway? This is where they're at because let me tell you something. 
I don't know exactly how. Some of y'all may know and studied how old Adam and Eve was. I don't know. I'm assuming they might have been in their 30s. They may have been 130. They might have been 330. I don't know. But all I know is that from day one in their life, they walked around naked. But up to this time right here. And all of a sudden, they realized that they was naked. They realized that they, hey, they walked around and they picked that fruit. Oh, man, that is so good. Uh, whoa, look right here, look right here. Here's something else coming. They ate it. Everything that was in there, they was able to pick that, and they said, oh, this is good. Except that one tree back there. How many of us are just like them? Even though we've got this Bible right here to tell us what to do and not to do, we still go and we say, I want that fruit. I want to share this to you because that's not the end of the story. Let me get to verse 8. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the, in the garden in the cool of the day. And it said, And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God among the trees in the garden. And the Lord called out unto Adam, and he said unto him, He said, Hey, Adam, where are you? He hollered out to Adam and said, Where are you? You might be thinking, Wait a minute, uh, God, God doesn't holler out to us like that. Oh, yeah, he does. God, he hollers out to us, but we don't listen to him. And at this time, God had, this was a common practice for God to walk around in the cool of the day, for them not to have clothes on, for them to eat anything that they wanted to up until sin came in. How many times in your life do you sin and you just think, I can't, I can't do right, I can't, boy, everywhere I turn, I'm going in the wrong direction. Just like that, every one of us are sitting there thinking, I'm just like Adam and Eve. But yet we know better. And I get to this point because he said unto him, I heard the voice in the garden, and I was afraid, and I hid. I'm to the story now. I read you that to get you to the story. Brother Steve, where, what are you talking about? I, we've heard all this. I, I want to share something with you. The next thing that God said is he said, who told you you were naked? Who told you you were naked? Let me share something with you. This, this old devil that we deal, deal with every single day of our life, he's the same one that tells each and every one of us, you're no good. He's the same one that tells us that we're not pretty enough or we're not smart enough. Children, youth, let me tell you something. In God's eyes, you are the most beautiful being that they are. You're the most pretty thing. Listen, I'll never forget a person told me one time, said, I got a lazy eye. Well, God gave you that lazy eye so you wouldn't have far to wink at somebody. God said, I'm gonna give you what you need. But the old devil... Who told them? Who told them as like at the same liar, the same deceiver, the same person that said you got in a bad hair day today, the same person that says, I want you to know you're not a nice person, are you? Who told you that nobody notices you? Who told you that you're going bald? Who told you that nobody likes you? See, the old devil will use every one of these. Who told you that you can't teach a class? Who told you that you can't preach a message? Who told you that you can't witness? Who told you that you're not a value of God? Who told you that you need to follow this world because the battle is the Lord's? Let me tell you something. The only thing that I know for sure with all of my heart is that the Bible tells me that I am more than a conqueror through him that loves me. So the devil can tell me anything he wants to. He can say, Steve, you're fat. I know I'm fat, but I'm a believer that loves God. He can say, Steve, you're losing your hair. I know I'm losing my hair. And I'm going to tell you, Bill, you could care less, do you? No, of course you don't. All that you need to know is, is your heart right with God? So who told you you're not of worth? Who told you that you can't worship? Who told you that you can't repent of your sin? Who told you that you, listen, the devil will try to do anything to tell you you're not good enough. You're not good enough for walk for Christ. You're not good enough to serve Him. You're not good enough to wear a I love Jesus shirt. You're not good enough to stand up and say, I love Him, I love Him, I love Him. The devil will lie to you. 
He's a deceiver. He will do anything in his power to mess you up and trip you up. But we got this. The Bible tells us plain in Philippians 4, 19, my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and the glory of Christ Jesus. I look around and there's only two people in here at the time. Both of them's last name's McKee. And I want to tell you something. Me and him, we both need a tie to make us look good. But I'm going to tell you what God never looked at what we wore. He never looked at what we're all about. Can you imagine somebody ripping you open and looking inside you? Are they going to see black? Are they going to see vile? Are they going to see heartache? Are they going to see hurtfulness? Or are they going to open up and they're going to see the righteousness of God? Are they going to see love? Are they going to see compassion? Are they going to see forgiveness? Are they going to see tenderness? See, the one thing that I realize about this old devil, if he'll deceive the first man and woman that was on this earth, what makes you think he won't deceive you? What makes you think that he's not going to attack you whenever you start praising the Lord? What makes you think that whenever you say, I'm going to go up there and stand but I'm, I'm, and sing and praise the Lord, what makes you think that he's not going to say, you can't sing that good, don't go up there? I'm thinking about going into the choir. Don't go into the choir. Everybody knows you hit bad notes. Right? You know something? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk down to that altar this morning and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get down before, on my face before God because first off, my family's struggling. Oh, don't go down there. Everybody's going to know your family's struggling. I'm going to go down there and I'm going to call out to God because, because my heart has been, has been really struggling about what is. Everybody's going to know it. Everybody's going to know it. This is what the devil does. The reason that people don't make a profession of faith in their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is because the devil's sitting there telling you, he said, everybody knows you. You're not good enough. You're not going to go down there and change your life right now. So let me share something, y'all. I, I want to get this out and open. I want to get this to where y'all know what it's, what's happened. Whenever I got saved, I didn't go from being saved to being a preacher. It didn't happen that way. I don't know what your walk or your path or, or what, how God wanted you to go. I have no earthly idea, but I'm going to tell you, whenever I got saved, I asked the Lord Jesus Christ to be my Lord and my Savior, and I still had all the junk in my life that I always had. Wasn't you? And then all of a sudden, people said, I got saved, and I got to get cleaned all up. I got to get to the point that, and you start talking about what you do. How I got to get cleaned up. I've got to get pure. I got to get my life right. Let me share something with you. If you want to get your heart right with God, you allow Him to clean you up. You allow Him to wash you clean. You allow Him to purify your heart and your mind and your soul. That's what He's all about. And it's a process. Some of us are more stubborn than others. Some of us are hard-headed. Some of us get to the point that we say, oh, Lord, I don't want to do that. But I'm going to tell you what God says. God's a jealous God. God doesn't want to share His place in your life with nobody. He wants to touch you. He wants to love you. He wants you to be clean and holy and righteous and he wants you to put on that armor of God. And whenever you go out there, you're ready to fight him with a little old twig like that. I'm going to fight the devil. Devil has no power over me. According to God's word, the devil has no power over you. So Jesus given us an example in this Bible. Whenever the devil was tempting him. He was hungry. He was tired. Oh, could you imagine? And the devil started tempting him. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. And he quoted the word of God. You want the devil to know his pecking order? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. 
your life, your walk, your family. And that old devil is way down there. The Bible says that there's a pit. There's a pit of chains in hell for the devil, but we're letting him tell us what we're supposed to do. So I want y'all to know something. This old devil that we give all the, oh, the devil made me do it, that's a bunch of bull. The devil knows where his pecking order is and it's going to be in the chains of darkness and hell for eternity. Do not let him clothe you. Let the Lord clothe you. It's our choice. Brother Steve, what do I do right now? What do I do right now? Brother Steve, where's the point? What do I do right now? What you do right now is you, hey, every single one of y'all, I want to ask you a question. I want to be honest. How many, how many of y'all are sinners? Raise your hand. I don't look around. So we got a pile full of sinners. That's the reason we get along so good. Because we're piled full of sinners. How many of y'all repent of your sin all the time? All right, so I look at it. But all of you didn't raise your hand. See, all of us are sinners, but all of us aren't repenters. Does that make sense? So whenever we sin, all we got to do is we say, Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. And God, I need you to wash me clean. I want to be clean, God. And let me tell you what he does. It's just like I remember them old ladies back my grandma, my great-grandmother, had a big old barrel out there behind her house. She'd already had running water on the inside of her house, but she wasn't using it. She would go out there and get that dish tub out there, and all of us kids would sit back there beside her, and we'd watch her. She'd put that dish pan right there, and it, and it was a board there, and that board, it just had ridges all over it. And my mom, what she would do is she'd get that and she'd start scrubbing on that. And while she was scrubbing on it, I was always thinking, my mom, let me do that. No, honey, I want to get all this clean. And whenever she was doing it, she'd hum. She'd hum. She'd sing. She'd have joy in her heart. And she was making everything she had, she touched every part of every garment. See, let me tell you something about our Lord. He wants to touch every part of every single one of us. And sometimes, whenever God starts cleaning us up, and He starts taking us over that washboard, it feels like we're going, oh, it hurts so bad. And then when we come out on the other side, and He rings us out, we think, man, don't I feel Good. Whatever the old devil's got you going through right now, kick that joker out. Brody prays all the time we want to kick that devil out of our lives. Allow the Spirit of God to touch your heart where you're at this morning. God, I come to you. And Lord, I want us to be washed white as snow. God, I want every person that's in here to, for them to realize how important it is for them to have a walk with you. God, we have no excuse that we can be deceived by the devil because your word tells us that we have power over the devil through the name of Jesus Christ. So God, my prayer is that we clean our hearts, we clean our mind, and God, we get on fire for you. God, use us every day of our life. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. As we stand.